Hey guys, it's that time of the month again. This is the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for June 2022, where we dig into the most interesting and scary stories that we've found from all around the world. If you have any stories you think that we should cover, then please go ahead and let us know in the comments. We'll check them out for future episodes. But for this one, we're going to be looking into the story of a missing 10-year-old girl from Wisconsin, a doctor accused of killing dozens of patients by overdosing them with fentanyl. We'll look at a tragedy in Minnesota that left five dead, including the pet dog, an official Pentagon report about people who were actually injured after seeing some otherworldly phenomena. We'll finish it out by looking at the latest development in the Happy Face killer case. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the episode. Number five, Missing Girl in Chippewa Falls. Chippewa Falls is one of those rural towns where most of the people would consider it a perfect place to raise their children. This small town in Wisconsin prides itself on its family-centered and fun-filled community living. With a population of just about 14,000, nothing much has been going on around here. That is, until this shocking news arrived. Ten-year-old Ileana Peters was last seen visiting her aunt's house on North Grove Street, which is just a stone throws away from her own house on East Birch Street. However, things that day turned a little sketchy when Ileana's father noticed that it was already 9 p.m. and his little girl still hadn't come home. As any parent would do, he traced back the trail from which he expected the fourth grader would have taken, and it was here he found her bike abandoned near their relative's place. He then immediately reported the child missing on April 24th, 2022. Operatives, as well as canine units of the Chippewa County Sheriff's Department and Lake Haley Police Department, quickly got on their feet to search the area. Authorities used everything in their arsenal, including drones, to search the immediate vicinity and the nearby woods. Everybody in the community was also alert of the crisis, so family, neighbors, and friends went on social media to express their worries about the missing girl. And just as the search was about to continue into the next day, police announced what everybody feared the most. During a press conference, it was revealed that a body was discovered in the wooded area near the Duncan Creek Trail on the morning of April 26th. A closer examination conducted by the Chippewa County Coroners confirmed that the body belonged to Peters, and authorities have yet to reveal to the public the actual cause of death. As such, the missing persons case is now a homicide investigation. Multiple leads have been looked into, and at the moment, police have urged everyone to remain vigilant as the perpetrator or perpetrators have yet to be apprehended. The day after the body was discovered, the sheriff's office did confirm that they had arrested a juvenile whom they believed to be in connection with the homicide case. According to the arrest affidavit, this person knew the Peters family personally, though they have yet to find out from him what really happened to the girl on April 24th. As this is an ongoing investigation, the police couldn't fully divulge the entire details, including the suspect's name. The tragic disappearance and eventual murder of Ileana Peters serves as a reminder that evil and danger lurks in every corner, even a place as tight-knit as Chippewa Falls. Number 4. Ohio Doctor Accused of Killing 14 Patients Every single one of us has a role to play in society. Teachers facilitate learning, firefighters put out fires, chefs provide us with food and doctors while they save lives. But if we veer away from what we're supposed to do, chaos ensues. On October 25, 2018, the Mount Carmel Health System, a health facility in Franklin County, Ohio, received an alarming report related to one of its medical staff whom they accused of malpractice. The person in question was Dr. William Hussle. An inquest was made and a month later, he was removed from patient care. 
During that period, three people died after allegedly receiving excessive and potentially fatal doses of medication. In a statement, the hospital said that the medical practitioner ordered the administration of dangerous doses of fentanyl, ranging anywhere between 500 to 2,000 micrograms. The DEA considers 2 milligrams or 2,000 micrograms of fentanyl to be a lethal dose. This substance, which is about 100 times more potent than morphine, is typically used to reduce discomfort suffered by dying patients. In December of that year, Hustle was fired from his job and subsequently arrested then. The Franklin County Prosecutor's Office then followed up with an investigation into the 46-year-old who was charged with 25 counts of murder, 11 of which were dismissed pre-trial but still leaving him with a whopping 14 murder charges. A grueling trial then soon followed. The prosecution called in a total of 53 witnesses comprising of medical experts, co-workers, and the surviving families of his purported victims. The families, in particular, revealed to the court how the health of their loved ones declined rapidly after they were put under his care. As argued by prosecution, the accused hastened the death of his patients, even if their death was already imminent. In this case, he was the cause of their demise and thus criminally liable under law. Surprisingly, the defense had just presented but one witness on the stand. Also a doctor, the witness testified that the patients had severe and unrecoverable illnesses. Recovery to a normal state of health is no longer possible for the patients, according to the physician. Aside from the failure to present a motive for the killings, the prosecution could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the doses he ordered to be administered hastened the patient's deaths. As such, on April 20th, 2022, William Hustle was acquitted from all murder charges and was set free as an innocent man. Number three, five people and a dog dead. If you listen to us, you've probably heard of the term wellness check. Also called a welfare check, this happens when law enforcement officers stop by a person's home just to make sure they're okay. It's only supposed to be a routine check-in, but sometimes they don't end well. On the morning of April 20th, 2022, the Hermantown Police Department in Minnesota received a request for a welfare check on 29-year-old Brandon Scosted. Authorities had received a report saying that he was going through a mental health crisis. Officers were then immediately dispatched to an address, however, they weren't able to make contact with the individual. A little bit of an inquiry led them to an address then in Duluth, Minnesota. This wasn't just a simple tip-off. They were told that this residence had weapons in store, which prompted local units to dispatch armed operatives just in case, and they couldn't have been more right with that decision. With everything in place, officials then knocked on the door of the house, which, as they found out, was owned by Brandon's aunt and uncle. While knocking, Police said they heard what they believed to be a gunshot originating from inside. This prompted them to retreat and then call for backup. With the help of robots and drones, police were able to infiltrate the property around 3 in the afternoon. Inside there, what they found was a ghastly scene of a terrible crime. They discovered the dead bodies of homeowners, 47-year-old Sean Barry and his wife Rihanna, as well as their children. 12-year-old Shaway and 9-year-old Sadie. The fifth body reportedly belonged to Brandon himself. Beside him was a 9mm handgun which he used to fatally shoot the victims while they were sleeping. Fearing of an imminent arrest, the person in question then shot himself. Then upon further inspection of the property, cops also found a dog that was shot and killed and they believed it was the family's pet. Duluth police surmise that the tragedy was the result of an apparent murder-suicide allegedly committed by Brandon. While the investigation on the case remains active and ongoing, the public couldn't help but be disheartened over what had happened to the family. For whatever he may have been going through, it was really cruel and very vicious of him to actually involve the people who many believed were there to console him in the first place. Number 2 
UFO burns, nerve damage, and electric shock. For decades, not only Americans, but people from all around the world have been yearning to learn more about the secrets and the truth behind UFOs. As such, the U.S. Department of Defense created an Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or AATIP, to research everything that is about UFOs, or what they now officially called unidentified aerial phenomena. The offshoot agency ran from 2007 to 2012, and for all those years, they were able to amass some of the most disturbing, if not dumbfounding information about UAPs. Recently, in April of 2022, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, or DIA, by way of the Freedom of Information Act, finally released more than 1,500 pages of UFO-related materials compiled during AATIP's time. The data released was nothing short of intriguing. One of the documents that recently got everyone's attention is titled Anomalous Acute and subacute field effects on human and biological tissues. Dated March of 2010, these findings were relatively new, and it supposedly mentioned in details the injuries incurred by human observers of anomalous advanced aerospace systems. This particular report cited 42 cases of medical files and more than 300 unpublished cases, all of which talked about humans sustaining injuries after their alleged encounters with UFOs. In one instance, a U.S. fighter pilot said that he found himself flying close to what they called an anomalous vehicle. It then flew away from them at a speed that they had never encountered before. But that wouldn't be the only remarkable thing that happened. When he went home, the man suffered what the doctors simply said was a sunburn but it was actually more like a radiation burn which lasted for almost a week. The results of an intensive medical probe further shocked them when they found out that the burn was actually indicative of microwave damage. This meant that he also incurred internal injuries, particularly in his brain. In a similar vein, the document also tackled cases of people who suffered severe nerve damage, terrible headaches lasting for days, and heart palpitations after they got close with these otherworldly flying vehicles. Digging deeper into the mystery, the paper also mentioned a much older compilation of UFO-related reports. There, it cited cases of unaccounted for pregnancy among women who were reportedly abducted and brought into one of these unknown vessels. There were also instances in which victims suffered paralysis, while others developed perceived telepathic abilities. For what it's worth, this slate of unexplained phenomena continues to baffle the public as well as government officials who themselves can't really explain what actually transpired in these case files. Number 1. Happy Face Killer Some call it a smiley face, others a happy face, but this rather ambiguous emoji with two dots and a curvy line tucked inside a circle tells the same thing, happiness. However, this iconic symbol has slowly become associated with sinister things, stuff that certainly is far from its intended message. In this story, the goofy grin has become a tool of terror, a message of death perpetrated by an infamous killer. The person in question was Keith Jesperson. Between 1990 and 95, the divorced father and long-haul trucker viciously strangled and killed at least eight women from six states, California, Washington, Oregon, Florida, Nebraska, and Wyoming. His targets were mostly sex workers and homeless individuals whom he had no personal connection with. Forensic psychologists later described Jesperson to be a narcissist. While he made efforts to remain anonymous, he couldn't help himself but brag about his crimes. This behavior supposedly brought about his downfall. In January of 1990, he raped, beat, and strangled to death 23-year-old Tanja Bennett in her own home. In what was a strange development, a woman actually falsely confessed to that crime. Rather than take this chance to get away with murder, though, the British Columbian native got upset that he was not getting the media attention he wanted. And so, 
he decided to do something that would put him in the spotlight again, although as an anonymous killer. He drew a smiley face on the bathroom near the crime scene and even wrote a letter to a publication detailing his deeds, and he signed that with a smiley face too. Investigators were quick to notice the similarity of the emoji from the bathroom wall to the one in the letter, and with this came to be the happy face killer. In the years that followed, the father of three continued to wreak havoc on the interstate highways, picking up unsuspecting women, violating them, and then, when he had his fill, killing them by strangulation before dumping their bodies along the roadside. Most of his victims were identified, except for two, one of which was found by a trucker in June of 94 on the side of California State Route 152 near Gilroy, south of San Francisco. Police simply called her Blue Pacheco, owning to the color of the clothes she was found wearing and where she was discovered. Like most of the women, she was sexually assaulted, tortured, and then strangled to death. With the help of the DNA Doe Project, a nonprofit investigative genetic genealogy group that helped identify people listed as Jane Doe's or John Doe's, police were finally able to put a name behind the Happy Face Killer's unknown victim. Recently, on April 13, 2022, almost 30 years after she was murdered, authorities announced the victim's name as Patricia Skipple. Patsy, as she was known by friends and family, was a mother from Colton, Oregon. She was believed to be around 45 years old at the time of her death. Meanwhile, Jasperson's arrest came in March of 95 following a curious circumstance. After killing his last victim, who turned out to be an ex-girlfriend in 1995, the serial killer attempted to end his life twice, but he failed each time. Hoping to get leniency during his sentencing, he decided to turn himself in, and while in custody, he unraveled the ghastly details of all his crimes. At one point, he claimed to have killed as many as 185 women although the court ultimately only convicted him on eight murder charges. The 67-year-old is now currently serving four life sentences at the Oregon State Penitentiary. Skipple's eventual identification certainly brought closure to family and friends who probably have been waiting for decades to find out about her fate. It was indeed tragic, needless to say, but at least the perpetrator is now paying for it. For more access to an entire uncensored and exclusive library from us, go check out our Patreon page. That link is down in the description below. Thanks so much for tuning in and all the support. I'll see you in the next one.